being the leading run scorer, leading the side really well again, um, playing with his heart on his sleeve the way that he does. Unfortunately for him, they weren't quite good enough to make it into that final, but you know, you can't, you couldn't really ask much more. I'm sure Tom Moody and all the coaching staff for the Sunrisers were particularly happy of the way Davey's gone about his cricket again. The numbers don't lie, he's had, he's had a good tournament. I love the fact that he's given the captaincy at the start of the tournament as well. I'm sure he, he's thrived and relished that, that opportunity. Once he gets in there, starts seeing the ball clearly and striking the ball. I'm not sure there's many more around the world at the moment that can strike the ball as well as he can. It's a different role that he's had to play. He's a powerful striker and someone that's been able to adapt quite well to those middle order roles. Probably just a little bit under the pass mark, I reckon. Limited opportunities, just the nine games. So, you know, you'd think if he was playing as well as he could that he would have played more games than that. And limited opportunities. I remember him playing a couple of decent innings right at the start of the tournament and then things dried up towards the back end when he didn't play as much. Wrapped the same, get the chance to captain the team. They had a pretty good year as well, just missing the, the playoffs by a single game. So uh, I'll give Glenn Maxwell seven out of 10. Missed a few games along the way. Um, was very consistent in the first part of the tournament, chipping in with some, um, some vital middle order runs and a couple of wickets along the way as well. Consistent, albeit you know not a, an outstanding tournament from, from Moses. Probably output wise, considerably down on what was expected of him. Not much to talk about there, but limited games, limited opportunities, so I'll give him four out of 10. Not much of a contribution with the bat. Uh, economy rate a lot higher than what he would expect and what his team would expect, and not a lot of wickets there in the wicket column either. So just the eight games for him, probably well below a pass mark. Example was terrific last year, only the six games this year, but he can hold his head up high. He's someone that most teams would probably love to have on, on their books. Look, a reasonable tournament, maybe didn't have the impact I thought he might have had. And when you consider that group of fast bowlers that Delhi were able to put together, um, you, you would have thought that he might have got more games and been, been able to dominate a little bit more than, than what he did. Fantastic to see him get an opportunity um, over there. And then to do what he did in those few games was, uh, was a great return for him. And I think that'll give him a lot of confidence going forward. To go back to the IPL, go back to a team where he's tasted success before at the Mumbai Indians, and then to stand up like that and deliver when it matters most and, and win an IPL for his fr franchise is probably the reason that Mumbai Indians got him back this season. Opportunities that he had, picked up a few wickets and crucial wickets, got a wicket in the final, but Hardik Pandya in the final will be W, so I'll give Dan Christian five out of 10. He's someone that's, that's always about um, being as well prepared as possible and he's probably looked back now with a few regrets on the way he went about things this season. I think he showed the world once again what, what a skillful package he is um, and, and probably particularly in this form of the game. You know, 15 wickets, 8 games, took wickets up front and when he got on a roll with the ball swinging around he was pretty hard to keep out.